Hi, in this video, I'm going to talk about uh, technology tools for assessment, and that includes grading and feedback. Now, it's quite a big topic assessment, so I'll try and keep it as short as I can. It may not be as short as I'd usually like it to be. Um, if we look at, let's look at the issues in assessment and maybe some of the assessment techniques that tools can help us with. So the issues really, I mean, the core issue in assessment is the workload on the lecture. We would like them to do more assessment, continuous assessment and give more feedback to the students, but that's quite heavy on work. So tools to reduce their workload. Now, it's not that we necessarily want to reduce the workload. We want them maybe to do more with the time they have, to be faster and get the feedback to the students, get useful feedback back to the students as quickly as possible. There is also the issue of cheating, and that's particularly become a concern in the last year or so with the um, emergence of generative AI. Um, then there is the issue of students who are at a distance, who are remote from us. So quizzes, uh, and we will say a little bit about quizzes, but not a lot, but it's a nice, simple way of uh, assessing lower order learning outcomes. Assignments and projects, which are somewhat more authentic, uh, students do on their own. They're so more higher, they're related to higher order learning outcomes as well. They have their challenges too. We look at discussion and collaboration and online examinations as well. Okay, just a quick look at quizzes all are properly known as objective tests and they're objective because they tend to be factual and it's unambiguous. There, nobody disagrees about what the correct answer is. There isn't subjectivity in it and the question has to be very clear in order for that to be true. So those are obviously, it's easy to automa automate the grading one right answer type of thing. Now they're known as multiple choice, but there are other question types as well available. Now, it seems easy to create multiple choice questions. There is quite a bit, there is a certain amount of skill involved in it. So best practice is advised and it's, uh, uh, one should go into it in a little bit more depth if you're planning to create multiple choice qu quizzes. Assignments and projects. And again, it's about controlling the workload and giving faster feedback on this. And what can we do to maybe uh, achieve that, to control workload and get faster feedback? Well, electronic submission helps for the start uh, because it allows the student to get the, the submission to the lecturer much faster and the lecturer to keep it all in one place. Now, rubrics have been long advised to, rem to reduce the subjectivity in grading assignments. But they can be quite difficult to use. But uh, by using electronic tools without rubrics, it makes it much easier to grade assignments because you're able to look at the criteria and choose which level of achievement in the criteria is appropriate to the student's submission. And it can also even generate automatic feedback that's, that is appropriate for that score. However, students may need individualized feedback. And even if they do need individualized feedback, a lot of students make the same errors. So we can record any feedback we give to the students and it becomes canned feedback. And then we can reuse existing feedback just by ticking on it and giving that to the student. That'd be called canned feedback. Or we can just, rather than writing or typing, just talk some feedback to the studio by recording some audio or video to go with it. Also, feedback often needs to be related to a specific point in an assignment, and this could be annotation. So we select a part of an assignment, a report or an essay, and we give feedback on that, which can, of course, be canned or audio or video as well. Now, peer assessment is a very interesting one. It's it's considered to be good educational because students assessing each other, that's added learning for them. But we worry about the students gaming the system and how easy it is to collate all those grades. There are very good technology tools that not only allow us to collect the peer grades for assessments, but also have built in algorithms for, for dealing, for addressing students gaming the system. And I can go into that in more detail at another time. Of course, because it's been submitted electronic, we can we can submit it for plagiarism detection, uh, which is moderately reliable, but has to be used with care. 
AI is really making the whole area of plagiarism more serious. And it's very hard at this point in time to know how that will come out. Uh, plagiarism detectors currently, as of uh, April 2024, are not very good at detecting the use of AI. So it remains to be seen how that's going to impact on the assignments we give students. People say it will force us to move to more authentic projects where they give interim assessments, but also it may increase reliance on summative examinations, supervised examinations at the end as well. Discussion and collaboration. We like the students to work in groups, whether it's on group projects or just in discussions. So we'll just quickly have a look at the technology tools that can help here. You can have synchronous live discussion, even within a class or an online class. You can get them to go into breakout rooms and have discussions. Uh, in a face to face class, we can ask people to break up in around tables and have discussions. But of course, it's quite difficult to grade. Um, asynchronous discussions um, can be done with messaging apps, break people into groups and they, and they exchange ideas and debate with each other. But these are probably best done within a virtual learning environment and what are called threaded discussion boards because we can break students into groups, we can have them discuss a particular topic, we can have a required number of uh, contributions and then we can look at it later and grade it. Uh, in terms of projects, those discussion forums are very useful for the students discussing their projects, but we can also have shared online documents as in Google Docs or in Microsoft Office 365, documents that they all work on together. Those are useful tools for them doing uh, both projects, uh, group projects and discussions. However, they can be quite difficult to grade as well. Uh, here, I would suggest that peer assessment should be considered because students, when they're working on projects, apart from being very worried about people um, free riding in a group project, uh, they probably have a very good idea of the quality of the contributions of the other students in it. And as I say, the peer assessment tools have algorithms built in to um, uh, address uh, gaming in that regard. AI is beginning to come into play here as well. There are some tools available that use AI for grading students in asynchronous discussions. Um, it remains to be seen how accurate they are yet. In the design of projects, group projects that are going to be, uh, certainly if they're going to be peer assessed, but it, uh, best practice is advised and uh, people need to take some care and get some training in how to do that. Assessment pathways. Um, I just mentioned this in, in passing because really tools are emerging to allow us to develop a sequence of assessments that might run through a course. Uh, they might be interim assessments, they might be mixed assessment types. Here they have to watch videos, take some quizzes to make sure they've done it. Here they have to outline a project they're going to do and they do various things uh, and they can all be uh, designed into a pathway. That can be a very useful tool as well. And it's you, as you might imagine, it's very suited to projects or authentic learning where we want interim reports from people or competency based learning where we expect them to reach certain grades before going on to the next challenge. And there are, as I say, there are specialized systems available for this. Lastly, I'd like to talk about online examinations, and this would be mostly for remote students, but often we have students are on campus and off campus, and we may want to facilitate it in this way as well. One thing about online examinations for campus students is that we can integrate it with objective tests, with free text questions as well, some graded by computer and some graded by human. So if they do it on the computer, that can be very convenient. Uh, another virtue of online exams, by the way, is that uh, students can take them at different time if they're taken from if questions are taken from question blanks. So these online examination platforms they'll uh, allow us to schedule examinations, so students can only access at certain times. They will help with identity verification, maybe where there is photos of students available, and they will check the identity of the of the student who's taken the examination. It will allow them to upload documents during an examination. It may restrict 
uh, on the time of the examination, as I say, in the scheduling, but also the length of access as well. And you can uh, tweak that for students that you want to give special consideration to. It can lock down their browser so they can't go searching the internet. It can disable copy paste so they can't take information from elsewhere and paste it into free text boxes, that type of thing. Uh, it can allow them to use their phone so that they can photo, uh, photo something that's on paper and upload it. It can also use the laptop camera to monitor the room or to monitor the student, but also to record for review later on. So you can provide a remote uh, automate, you can provide a real proctor or supervisor remotely watching the student as they take the exam, or you can provide an automatic proctor that supervises and records for review later on to check for any cheating. By the way, that automated proctor can, you can mix those in a way. The automatic proctor can warn a student that they're doing something that's suspicious and ask them to stop. Or, or the automated proctor can draw the attention of a, of a real supervisor to what's going on who would look at it and speak to the students. So you would record the camera, the screen and the audio, and that may be used afterwards to, to uh, verify that somebody was cheating if that suspicion was there. And as I say, it does have suspicious activity detection in the automated proctor. So that's the short video on assessment. I hope you found it useful.